So today I'm here to talk a little bit about Zap. Uh, Zap is our new program. We're really excited about it. Uh, it's fundamentally changing the way we think about car ownership in India. Uh, it's something we unveiled earlier this year and we've had really a tremendous response. And fundamentally, it's really just about the idea of individuals who want to, to buy a car uh, but realize that you know the car is is not going to be used all the time. They don't need the car all the time, and and so when they're not using that car, uh, why not actually have that car earn some money for you and, and help offset that EMI payment, uh, help offset those other overheads that come with car ownership here in India. So we we really thought this was a, a great market to to key in on and, and tap into and allow people to uh, leverage their car. Uh, to actually uh, share with Zoomcar and earn a little bit of money on the side. And, and so that's what it's all about, and we're going to talk more about it today. Uh, but before we do that, I wanted to take a step back and, and give a little bit more context around what is Zoomcar, so what is the self-drive car into market? Because ultimately, uh, if you're going to collaborate and partner with Zoomcar, uh, you have to be really comfortable with the, the fundamental model that we're operating and that we're running. And, and so it's really all about self-drive. Uh, so we're not into chauffeurs, we're not into taxis, uh, we're into the self-drive market, uh, wh which is a market that you know, globally is actually about 75 years old. Uh, it's something that's been going back uh, from the time of uh, World War II and, and actually even, even earlier. So when, when we think about what the, the overall ecosystem looks like uh, globally, uh, that's actually a very helpful, instructive point. So you, you think about, well, what about you know, countries like the US, what about countries like China, uh, those are often benchmarked in India. And if you look at those markets and then you look at the rest of the world and you think about the, the total aggregate number of cars that are in the self-drive ecosystem, it's really astonishing. Uh, and then you think about the U.S., it's about almost 2 million plus cars. And, and so when you're looking at 20 lakh cars, uh, you're looking in China uh, at, a, at a market that's already over 2 lakh cars. Uh, now India, uh, we're still in a very, very nascent stage. Uh, we're actually about 3,500 cars. Uh, of which Zoomcar has about 70% market share. So uh, it, it's actually something which is still uh, very much taking off, uh, which is exciting because it means that we have a very, very long way to run. And if you look out at the rest of the world, uh, you have another 20 lakh cars that are there. So it just shows that you know, the ecosystem is, is really poised for uh, a huge explosion. And, and that's really buttressed by you know, a couple of other larger macro trends which we see across the country here. And that's around disposable income, uh, the idea that disposable income has, has gone up uh, for, for most urbanites uh, anywhere from sort of three to four X over the last decade. And, and this is something which is again very, very powerful uh, because really it's the, the core city dwellers, uh, city workers, city users who are powering Zoom car, who are powering self-drive as a, as a concept and as an idea. And that's something which is set to, to propel further and, and double again over the next couple of years. And, and so that's what's going to, to help ensure that the base uh, continues to grow and, and continues to get us closer to China, uh, Europe, and, and the US as it relates to self-drive cars. Uh, so we, we think about the actual ecosystem of ownership today in, in India. And, and this is also where it's really astonishing uh, because you have uh, on a you know, per thousand people, you know, India has less than one car. Uh, where you look at the US, it has 750. You look at a country even like Brazil, you know, almost 100. Uh, and it, it's really, it's quite astonishing to see those numbers. And you know, when you think about even percent of households, even in the big cities, uh, on a percent of household basis, you're still you know, at around 10% or even lower. Uh, so, so that gives you a, a better sense, even still today, that the market uh, has just an enormous way to run and, and grow as, as we come along here over the next couple of years. And so, you know, finally, you know, as, as we think about the projections for the Indian market in, in general, you know, we talk about today being around 3,500 cars. Uh, we're very confident that you know, we'll see that going to 20,000 plus cars by 2018, uh, and then by 2020 going to another uh, you know, tri actually you know, tripling and quadrupling uh, to get to north of 80,000 cars. So that, that's really the way we see the overall market evolution. Uh, it, it largely mirrors what has happened in uh, China and also in the US uh, going way back. Uh, but the idea here, we think it's going to be even more powerful in India uh, for the simple reason that uh, you have other services that are complementing the uh, overall march towards uh, car ownership uh, destruction, if if we will. So you know the the idea is that 
uh, you have Uber, you have Ola, uh, you have you know, metro systems coming up, and, and that's actually a really powerful point uh, to kind of you know, think about people moving away from traditional car ownership. And, and that's perfect for, for Zoom car, and it's perfect for Zap. So just to talk a little bit more about our position here uh, in India and across the globe, as I mentioned, we're at around 70% market share, and, and that number is actually growing monthly. And the reason for that is because we, we've invested very, very heavily in the core technology, the core product, the core customer experience. And, and so more than anything, it's, it's the customer experience which is going to ensure that customers keep coming back. That's why we have such very high repeat rates. Uh, we have very, very high customer satisfaction levels. And we, we spend really a painstaking amount of time thinking about areas like car condition, uh, the mechanical car condition, the car cleanliness, you know, thinking about timeliness and consistency of delivery uh, of the booking. Uh, it's something we're, we're constantly innovating around that. We're, we're constantly tweaking and refining and improving our processes because you know, the way we see it, it's, it's very much about that continuous improvement. Uh, and, and that's what I think we, we've seen really uh, over the last you know, one year, two years. We've, you know, every month we're benchmarking ourselves and we're seeing that our, our metrics have gotten consistently better and better uh, as it relates to customer experience, customer satisfaction. And, and that's the most important thing as you think about a consumer facing business that's going to continue driving market share. Uh, and so that's why we're you know, quite confident in, in what's happening here over the next several months and several years. And it, it's sort of uh, buttressed by the, the fact that uh, you kind of see that our utilization levels, uh, so the occupancy of the cars, are significantly higher uh, than both our, our Indian peers as well as global competitors. So if you think about the weekday, uh, Monday through Friday, we're consistently running at you know, two-thirds occupancy level, uh, around 65, 66%. And the, the weekday for most players globally is, is around 35%. So, and and we're, we're pricing it at a, at a reasonable level. It's not like we're, we're heavily discounting. We don't really believe in discounts as a company. Uh, so you see that just being you know, a couple percent of our overall base, which is very, very small uh, compared to other even e-commerce players in India. And then on the, the weekends, uh, we're seeing that you know, we're certainly very much thriving uh, as well. <coughs> so, th so this is where we're uh, around 80% uh, on occupancy levels in the weekend uh, versus around 70% for other global comps. And so that kind of blends out our overall occupancy utilization levels to something around 70%, uh, which is about 20% more uh, than the, the global average. And that's really what is going to propel and drive the, the business forward and ensure that uh, as a partner to Zap, as an associate in our program, in our sharing program, uh, you will earn you know, very healthy numbers, uh, very healthy revenue to help uh, offset your, your overall monthly cost base. And, and so that's, I think, what has uh, certainly propelled the early growth uh, of the overall model and, and helped prove it to be uh, quite successful, uh, even though it's you know, still in its first year of operation. Uh, so finally, uh, just to say, you know, we have you know, very, very strong backers uh, from an institutional perspective uh, as investors. So th this is an important point whenever uh, you're going to collaborate and, and partner with any company. Uh, it's important to know who is backstopping that company and, and who is supporting that company. And for ZoomCar, we're actually the only car rental, sub truck car rental player in India uh, who is backstopped by uh, large institutional investors. So our, our smaller competitors you know, haven't really been able to secure you know, that type of partner. And you know, I think it, again, speaks volumes for what we've been able to achieve in a short time, as well as the overall customer experience. Uh, but more than that, I think they're, they're very confident in our vision for the future. They're very confident in, in also the ZAP program, uh, very supportive of that. Uh, so Ford is actually our largest, the Ford Motor Company is our largest investor. Uh, they uh, just recently came on board uh, earlier this year, in fact, uh, as part of a $24 million funding round. Uh, and so that was something also was contributed uh, a part by Sequoia Capital, uh, which was another one of our larger earlier investors, as well as Nokia Growth Partners, uh, which is also one of our earlier, uh, much larger investors. Uh, and so you know, we're, we're very excited to welcome all these guys back. Uh, they've been very supportive uh, over the last couple of years as we've grown and uh, gone across multiple cities in India and introduced models uh, like Zap. And, and so they'll continue to support us as we move ahead on the, the path forward. So just to talk a little here now about what it actually means to, to really own a car. And I think a lot of you guys have a, a good sense already uh, from a cost standpoint. Uh, but you know, to kind of talk through the evolution of 
you know, the, the habits and the, the tendencies as well as really understanding what sort of the full stack ownership cost structure looks like and, and what it really means from a convenience and time factor perspective. Because I think that's something that also people forget uh, is that you know, not only there's, there's money, there's cost associated with car ownership, uh, but there's also uh, an incredible time factor there, uh, which really you know, sucks bandwidth and you know, takes you away from you know, doing things that you probably find a lot more enjoyable. Um, but one, one larger trend is that you know, we, we've seen people consistently from the early 2000s uh, when you, know, you had much, much smaller cars, uh, like cars like the Alto uh, from Ruti, they have kind of evolved the preference and the taste where people have been you know, kind of going for you know, bigger and better cars, obviously more features, and uh, that's kind of the expectation. And you know, people want to, to use the car as you know, a little bit more of an expression uh, of, of who they are as opposed to just more purely utilitarian. So I think we've evolved from like an Alto to say a Swift to, to maybe now a Baleno or an I-20 Elite uh, cars that you know, have a little bit more spunk, a little bit more character. Uh, and so, you know, the aspirations, we understand that. I mean, that's, that's part of it. Uh, that's, that's part of the fun. That's part of the joy of it. And, you know, we're very confident that Zap can help you uh, as, as you're thinking about, you know, moving up to, you know, bigger and better models, different types of cars. Uh, we can certainly help you facilitate it by you know, making it more cost effective for you and, and making it just more accessible. Uh, and so that's, that's really, you know, I think, part of the, the fun. That's, that's really the name of the game here. Um, but as we as we think a little bit more deeply about what it, again it means to own the car from a cost standpoint, uh, whichever car you ultimately may select, uh, you really have to think about a lot of these different variables at a deep level because you know not only there's a down payment, so presumably most folks like to take a loan, um, you know, and and that's something where you know you take you know ten to twenty percent margin money uh, is, is typically pretty common uh, for people who put down payments uh, on the car, so you know that that may be a lacquer. A you know, lakh and a half, maybe even two lakh, depending on the type of car uh, that you ultimately select. Uh, and so, you know, along with that, there's the upfront registration tax uh, costs. Uh, then uh, you have you know, some other whatever ancillary uh, fitments you might have uh, from an accessory standpoint. Uh, and then, and then the ongoing cost. Uh, well, you know, at, at that time, you also, of course, put on the insurance uh, as as part of it, uh, which you usually remit along with the down payment. But once that piece is done. Uh, then you, you kind of go into the operating side of it. Uh, and when you think about the operating side of it, uh, you're really looking at the ongoing EMI cost uh, as the big one, uh, which is there as a, as a fixed cost, of course. Uh, then you think about your, um, your overall sort of maintenance cost. Uh, you have that you know, maintenance and fuel cost, which are you know, tied to the running of the car, but you know, still significant costs nonetheless. Uh, then you, you think about the uh, overall cost around, say, parking. Uh, a lot of people uh, who live in housing societies or you know, live in larger buildings, uh, there is an ongoing monthly parking charge, uh, which is there. And you know, so that certainly uh, does uh, weigh down uh, overall on things. And, and then you have to, to think about, again, the, the time factors of, of going for fueling, going for maintenance, servicing, and, and dealing, interacting with guys, uh, evaluating and vetting. So all of that is there, uh, and then renewals for these, these different licenses uh, for registration and uh, the tax purposes. So, so that, and of course, revamping and uh, re-upping your insurance policy. So all of that is there, uh, certainly part of it. Uh, and then ultimately, at the end of the, the day, when you, you know, have the car for you know, four years, five years, uh, you know, for six years, typically people uh, want to, to go ahead and resell the car. Uh, so, so that's another cost and expense that, that comes along with it. Uh, so really, it's you, know, you think about those uh, elements tied together. It's really not that much fun uh, to actually you know, think about owning a car uh, when you have all of that to, to constantly burden you and, and, and deal with. And you know, we we say that you know why why is that so? I mean, really fundamentally, is there not a way to do that a whole lot better? And when we think about one stat, which is particularly alarming or troubling, if you will, from you know, many levels. Uh, it's the fact that you know, roughly 90% of the time, uh, your car that you buy, that you, your hard-earned money has gone into, is actually going to be sitting idle. Uh, and, and that's just crazy. That's insane. I mean, the way we think about that, you know, why would you buy anything and just let it sit there and kind of rot, accumulate dust, and see it depreciate, 
And it's, it's one of the most underutilized assets in the world. I mean, and this is actually not even just for India. I mean, we've seen this, uh, we've seen this globally, we've seen this in the US, seen this in Europe and China, but it's actually even worse in India in terms of the idle time because there's so many other alternatives. Like people, you know, okay, you can go, you can take your two-wheeler, uh, you can take a rickshaw, uh, you can take the train, you can take the bus, you can take the, the local train, you can take the metro, uh, you can walk. Uh, there's all these different elements. You know, some people think a bicycle who are a little bit more adventurous. So. You know, these modes of transit are all there. And so, you know, people fundamentally don't need the car all the time. And, and so when you have all the cost overheads, you know, I think that's the real pain point. That's the real problem that we're actually attacking and, and solving uh, with, with the Zap program and, and giving you that solution. So with that context in mind, you know, it's a great time to kind of jump in exactly. To, so what is Zap? I mean, fundamentally, you know, as an associate here, when you come on to the platform, when you buy a new car, uh, what does that mean? What is the process? Right? And so that's you know, the most important thing for, for you to understand uh, if you're going to uh, partner and partake in Zap. And, and so when it all starts with you wanting to, to buy a car, uh, so you think about the type of car you want, you know, whether it's a Swift or it's a you know, i20 Elite or a Ford Figo, whatever it may be, uh, you think about that car, uh, we help you uh, with respect to the, the rates. Uh, and you know, help ensure that you'll have the you know, the best pricing, the best discounts, uh, the best package from an after sale standpoint. Uh, we can use our scale, our heft, uh, to ensure that's really there, uh, which is really great because you know you can save a lot more money uh, on the upfront cost anyway, uh, and and so that of course goes right to your pocket. Uh, but when you think about that, uh, you will ultimately select on that car. Uh, will help uh, arrange, will help connect you to you know, financiers, uh, lenders, banks, and BFCs if if you like to go that route. Uh, or if you want to go uh, with cash, that's also fine. Uh, but so, you know, we help facilitate that upfront uh, as well as the uh, insurance payment. So we help work with uh, different insurance companies to help get the best rates, uh, best discounts, etc. Uh, and, and then kind of go ahead with uh, the formal initiation, the formal uh, purchase. And you know, at that point, uh, just to call out an important characteristic of the program is that the, the car will, will actually then be registered with ZoomCar. So it'll be registered in our name. So the RC book will actually say Zoomcar, uh, and, and it will not say the associate, it won't say your name, uh, for the simple reason that for this model, for this program to work, uh, the car has to be registered in the name of a license holder for self-drive. And so Zoomcar, of course, has the Blackboard license. We have the self-drive license, a rent-a-cab permit, uh, which allows us to run the cars anywhere in India. So, so right now, that's the prevailing regulation. So uh, the, the vehicle has to be registered in Zoomcar's name. Uh, so you know one one nice benefit there is that uh, across most states actually there is a actually a, a price difference if you will uh, for the registration tax for uh, the blackboard versus the whiteboard uh, and so you know, depending on the state uh, you can you can save you know quite considerably uh, up front and you know so that's something that our, our team can kind of coach you with uh, for each particular state uh, but but that certainly is something also uh, to kind of look out for and, and enjoy in many instances. Um, so once that piece is done, uh, so once then you, you have the car registered in Zoomcar's name, all the financing formalities, all that's done, uh, then the car you know, goes on road and the car is yours. So from there, uh, you can use the car as you wish. Uh, and then whenever you're not using the car, so there's a, a Zap app. Uh, so we have our, our Android app. Uh, we'll be launching the iOS app uh, early, early next year. Uh, but with with that app, uh, it really enables you to, to kind of do everything you'd want to do as part of the program. So you can you know, select a listing time. So you can say, okay, I'm using the car, let's say Monday through Friday morning. Uh, then Friday night through Sunday night, I'm not going to use the car. Okay, I can list, let's say on Wednesday, I, I know that on Wednesday. So on Wednesday, I'll just list the car for Friday night to Sunday night. And, and then bookings can come into that car, into your car. And we'll, we'll send you a push notification, we'll send you an SMS, we'll notify you over email when a booking comes. And so the great thing is, you, know, you, you have the car actually, it's, it's kept at your house. So you keep it at your place, uh, you keep it at your house, your flat, your apartment, uh, or if it's during the work week, you, you can keep it at, at the office. And your know, bookings will just get routed uh, to your car at that place. And we, our customers will actually come and go and unlock the car remotely using the smartphone uh, through our, our normal Zoom car app. Uh, so that's all tied in through technology, and, and it makes it really, really simple. Uh, so, you know, from a process standpoint, you know, that's, that's really great. Um, so then you take the booking, uh, you share in the revenue. Uh, so we have a revenue share of 75% uh, to you, the associate, 25% uh, to Zoomcar. 
and so you know that's that's how you you earn and, and help offset your your EMI and your uh, normal monthly costs. Uh, so that's something which, at the end of the day, uh, we can you know confidently say that you know, if you list it, you know, say 10, 12 days out of the month, uh, you, you'll certainly see you know, a very meaningful you know fifty percent, you know sixty, seventy percent reduction in your EMI uh, very comfortably. And you know, I think that's where it becomes you know really exciting, uh, really compelling. So to kind of touch a little bit more on some of those economics, because I think you know everyone at the end of the day is is quite interested, quite keen on on seeing what what exactly they can save uh, from a monthly ownership cost standpoint. And so really, I'll walk you kind of through uh, an example that we have here, uh, which is around say like a, a MUV type car, so like the Ford EcoSport, for instance. Uh, you know we're you know, quite confident that you know, will save you you know sixty to seventy percent uh, on a monthly basis of your your standard ownership cost. So, walking through some exact numbers, you know, if you're thinking about buying an Eco Sport yourself, uh, you're looking at the total on-road price of you know, around 9.3 lakh uh, for uh, a lower-end uh, sort of base base type variant. Uh, with Zoom Car, uh, you're actually looking at an on-road price that's more like you know 8.1 lakh, uh, and and that's actually largely driven from you know, again the, the discounting that we have, uh, the discounted prices, plus the the difference in the you know, registration uh, and the, and the tax structure. So you know, that actually really, really helps um, you move the needle quite a bit. And so when we think about then the earnings that you can see. So you know, of course when you're thinking about earnings, when you normally buy the car yourself, you're not going to have any earnings. So it's, it's really zero, uh, of course, because you're, you're actually just putting money out uh, to run the car. But now with Zap, uh, over, over the life of this agreement, and so the understanding is that you know, we would collaborate, we would partner over two and a half years. So over, over 30 months, which is you know, the way we see the car would kind of uh, you know, run you know, a, a decent amount over that time. And, and so that's probably when most people would want to, uh, to look at you know, kind of relieving the car and then think about turning over the car and getting a, a new car, in fact. And, and so the, the actual total savings uh, that you could expect to see, the earnings that you expect to see, uh, would be you know, north of 4.5 lakh uh, over that whole period, uh, you're, if you're thinking about uh, what it is. Uh, on a monthly basis, you know, aggregated, multiplied out by 30. So, so that's really powerful. Uh, and, and as you think about what that means from an offsetting of cost standpoint, so you think about the resale value, uh, th this is something where uh, you would actually, you know, have a slightly higher resale value in a, in a normal whiteboard context because you're running the car a lot less. Uh, but the, the point there is that uh, there's actually not that much of a difference. And when you look at the the resale value on a whiteboard versus the, the resale value with Zoom car on a blackboard, uh, and, and then if you factor in the, the Zap earnings, uh, you're still coming out like over 3.5 lakh ahead, uh, which is really powerful. So, you know, the, the resale value, you know, expected resale value for uh, a whiteboard in this context is probably about a lakh more uh, than what it would be with Zoom car. But as I said, since you're getting already 4.5 lakh plus uh, with the Zap earnings, uh, you're obviously very comfortable, and you're still coming out, you know, 3.5 lakh ahead. So th there's really no doubt uh, that th this is something which is giving a huge value proposition from a cost standpoint. So as you think about the the overall cost of ownership, uh, going back even the fact that the upfront cost was also much lower, uh, you're saving about 4.2 lakh, uh, 4.2 to 4.3 lakh in terms of pure savings uh, over the life for an ownership. Uh, model around the EcoSport, around the MUV type segment. Uh, so, so this is something uh, which, again, we feel is extremely powerful. If you break that out on an EMI basis, on a monthly basis, you know, an EcoSport uh, on a whiteboard is around 22, uh, 22K, 22,000 a month. Uh, you Now you're looking at you know, something which is around seven to 8,000 a month uh, with Zap, uh, when you think about the earnings that you can make uh, on a monthly basis. So that's, that's pretty powerful. I mean, seven to 8,000 for a car like an EcoSport uh, that that's actually like half of what you'd normally pay for a Maruti Swift, so you know that's uh, something which is, you know, kind of like more like the EMI of a Nano, uh, as opposed to uh, an EcoSport, uh, which obviously I think people can relate to, and it, you know, really I think plays very very well overall. So now that you have so that context in mind uh, and can understand from a, a numerical standpoint on and what it really means and and what the opportunity and the upside really is. Uh, you know, now you know, it's helpful to kind of dive in a little bit more into the operational process and you know, think about what it would be kind of like a day in the life of a, of a Zap associate. 
so to speak. And, and so really it's about the Zap app, as, as I articulated earlier. This app has really been designed fresh from the ground up, you know, with no preconceived notions around uh, what the experience should be. We, we kind of you know, built it from totally from your perspective, saying like, how is it going to be as simple, as easy, as elegant as possible um, to kind of fit this in sort of seamlessly into your day-to-day -day life and ensure that uh, you can earn uh, money in, in sort of a very passive fashion uh, where you just are leveraging the you know, existing asset, existing car that you have. And so it all comes down to this app. Uh, it gives you the, the functionality to uh, go ahead and, and select those times for listing, uh, customize the, the pickup location, uh, as we said, uh, and then you, know, you receive the bookings uh, with the notifications coming, the start time, etc. You know, there's a you know, very simple uh, sort of checklist that you uh, will fill in to you know, indicate that the car is you know, already you know, healthy in terms of the, the maintenance and the you know, fueling, etc. So you're all set uh, for you know, giving your car out uh, to, uh, to a customer. You know, so in that way, it's you know, a little bit like kind of like an Airbnb almost, uh, where you have you know, your house or your apartment that you, know, kind of, you get ready for the, the person to come and use. So in many ways, it's, it's along those lines. So you know, very simple, all that's digital, all that's in the checklist. So you know, again, no hassles, no issues. You know, it's just a matter of, really a matter of seconds uh, to, to kind of get that in order. Uh, so again, uh, very, very convenient. But then when that's already done, uh, when the car is listed, you get the booking coming in, uh, then uh, what happens is uh, the, the user will you know, have the, the message, he'll get you know, notified where to pick up the car. Uh, he'll actually be able to go then and his registered mobile number uh, from his smartphone is, is synced up to our system so that him and only him, uh, so he's the only person that can actually go and unlock the car and then kind of go and start his, his booking and, and zoom off. Uh, so that's actually enabled through this proprietary IoT device, uh, which I was alluding to earlier, which we have in all of our cars, uh, which not only has vehicle tracking 24-7, uh, but it has the ability to uh, lock and unlock the car through the central locking system, and also the ability to uh, have a, a tap in to the overall car diagnostics. So thinking about the health and wellness of the engine, the clutch, the brakes, all that is all included in the proprietary IoT device. Um, so so that, that's another you know, added advantage there, which I'll get into a little bit more later. And so finally, uh, once the, the customer is on his booking, then you know, he goes, you know, zooms off wherever he's gonna go, and he comes back, and then you know, he just reviews and uh, approves the, the drop-off checklist, uh, and, and he actually goes, and he just releases the, the car back, and, and just moves off, and that's a matter of seconds as a process. Um, you know, so ultimately then, uh, you'll, you'll kind of go and, and, and corroborate and sort of confirm uh, what the, the customer has done you know, after, after the booking. Uh, and, and so that, that will officially sort of close off the booking, uh, if you will. Uh, so you're, you're kind of like the surrogate uh, to, to the car just to you know, ensure that you know, everything is in, in good working order. Uh, again, very similar to uh, sort of like an Airbnb process uh, that you might expect. And you know, so I think this is really, again, simplified even more uh, because it's uh, all there on the app it's, you know, and it's in a car, so it's in one place. <clears throat> so when, when we think about then a little bit more on, on what our, our systems and our processes do and how they empower you as an associate, uh, it really goes back actually to this IoT device, which I was just alluding to, because it not only uh, has the 24-7 the tracking, but uh, it has this app-based unlock uh, lock system. So it really frees you up. So there's no manned handover as such. It's not like you have to sit around at home uh, waiting for a, a booking and waiting for a customer and then handing them the keys and saying, you know, okay, sir, go and have a nice journey. Uh, it's, it's not like that. Uh, it's, it's very touchless. Uh, it, it's very self-serve. It's very uh, in, interactive where the customer can go uh, engage with the phone, uh, either use the app or drop a simple SMS and lock and unlock the car. And the keys are securely fastened in the glove box already, uh, so there's no issues. Uh, no chance for theft. Um, you know, this is something which we've been, you know, perfecting actually over the last year plus, uh, and and really have spent significant amounts of effort and time uh, to really look at the absolute best practices. And you know, we've done rigorous testing, uh, you know, over over thousands and thousands of iterations, and we we've seen that this is you know extremely reliable, and it's, it's something which really that customers love, and it's a big wow factor. And in fact, it actually helps uh, a lot with our demand, uh, but it also makes your life as an associate. Uh, much, much easier. And, and that's really the, the name of the game for us. 
So not only do we have this app-based unlock unlock uh, through the IoT device, uh, but we also have other systems and checks in place, such as sort of speed governance, where we have a, a warning system tied to certain speeds, uh, so that when customers are exceeding that, uh, there's strong beeping uh, notification in real time uh, to ensure that the, the customer, um, the driver, reverts back to a, uh, a more sane, sort of more healthy level uh, to help ensure that you know, accidents don't take place and uh, the car is in, in good shape. And so we're very, very, very uh, serious and vigilant about that, uh, and we have been uh, actually for some time. And, and so finally, this real-time monitoring uh, around the, the health and wellness of the car and, and the mileage of the car. So this is what I was alluding to where really I think huge value can come uh, because oftentimes people say, oh, well, you know, if I, if I put my car uh, on the Zoom system, uh, will you know, I have much higher you know, maintenance charges or you know, will I have cars that you know, the parts won't last as long? Uh, now, you know, that's, you know, it's, it's a valid question that, that people have and they raise. And what we've done to aggressively address this question is uh, we have, again, you know, our, in our belief, this is one of the most sophisticated systems across the world, not just even in India, uh, because we're, we're monitoring and tracking you know, over 20 different components and, and parts around the car in, in terms of processes and systems, etc. So when we think about clutch, brake, battery, engine, suspension, uh, AC, you know, these are some of the most critical components, uh, I think everyone would agree, uh, around the vehicle. And, and so we can actually get real-time health and wellness understandings around the same. Uh, we can also then kind of tie in the, the customer's driving, we can tie in your driving, uh, and give actual real-time driving scores, and, and give that feedback uh, more in real-time through push notification, through SMS, through audio alert. And that's something which can improve, radically improve driving habits uh, and, and help because ultimately what we do is we tie that back in then to our loyalty program. So, you know, if, if customers are driving, you know, and they have a driving score of say 95 out of 100 and someone else has maybe 75 out of 100, well, we can actually incentivize and give additional carrots uh, for those customers who are driving really well and we can, you know, we can have more cost and sticks for the drivers that are not performing as well. And so, so that ensures that uh, you're consistently seeing you know, strong uh, habits and improvement uh, around the car health. And it also allows us to do more preventative maintenance around the car uh, so you, know, you don't get caught uh, in an issue that might come up uh, later on. So it's always better to kind of nip those things in the bud uh, because the reality is, you know, the, the car, it's like any machine, uh, it, it does need ongoing maintenance and servicing. Um, you know, certain components uh, will obviously wear out over time. And, and this monitoring system gives you enormous insight into that. Uh, where before it was largely guesswork, and even if you had a private car that was not associated with Zap, you know, this was obviously a major frustration because you, know, you, you never really had a good sense, you didn't have sort of objective facts and data. You know, now also this is a way for us on a normal service and maintenance thing, uh, you know, when you have a normal maintenance event, you can actually save costs there as well because you kind of know exactly what's up and, and, and sort of what's going on and uh, ensure that you know, they're, they're doing the right things uh, at the right times. And, and so all of that will, will really, really help. And so then finally, uh, which, which is again, uh, something briefly touched upon, but the, the fact that the mileage can actually improve significantly because we can give real-time insights into the, the behavior uh, that you exhibit, such as harsh braking or you know, sort of swerving or you know, you're thinking about uh, having acceleration, which is too aggressive, let's say. <clears throat> so all of that uh, will funnel into the car mileage. And if, if you're doing that in the right way, uh, then you know, you're actually going to save considerably on fuel. And, and that's also something which you know, we're confident, you know, a couple thousand rupees a month uh, can certainly be saved on fuel over top of your uh, revenue and, and the in-hand cash uh, that you'd expect from your booking earnings. So another question that commonly comes uh, when we think about the ZAP program is, so what really happens when there is an accident? Uh, so you know, we, we talked a little bit about you know, some of the, the maintenance points uh, but when there's an accident, you know, we have very, very strong insurance, first and foremost. So the way the process works is that you know, the accident would be either reported by uh, you or by the customer. Uh, and so you know, whether it's you know, smaller or more major. And uh, if there, the damage charges, the accident request, uh, all of that can be taken care of on the app itself. Uh, so just a couple of taps uh, where you can kind of report that in. Uh, so that's not an issue uh, at all. And, and from there, we kind of take that handover and we work on, if there's a larger case, you know, we work on the claims process. Um, you know, we interface directly with the insurance provider. Uh, so you don't have to worry, you don't have to 
uh, be concerned about having to go back and forth with someone. Uh, we know that's not really a, a fun process. We have systems in place. We have teams in place to be able to engage and deal with that. Uh, we also work closely with the RSA, the roadside assistance providers. Uh, so that's something, again, uh, you as an owner of the car don't have to get involved with. Uh, and that really helps because we also have uh, strong uh, cost-saving uh, partnerships there with the RSA providers. So all of that sort of back-end processing work and the, that the on-ground facilitation is, is totally taken care of by ZoomCar. And, and so that's really an important point. Uh, again, it gives you the peace of mind, gives you the comfort, gives you the flexibility uh, to really know that you, you don't have to uh, be banging your head day in, day out uh, on something like this. You have a lot better things to do with your time uh, and your money as well. So we also, in, in addition to this on the insurance side, uh, we do have on-demand garage connects. Uh, so we have a very long, long, long list uh, of, of partners, both on the, the authorized workshop side as, as well as some of the, the more local third-party sides uh, for some small, minor, more minor works. Uh, and, and so that also gives you uh, a good sense because you know, it's really about when something like this happens. And you know, this, it's inevitable that you'll have you know, some of this happen from time to time. Uh, you know, it doesn't happen very often, obviously, but the point is, you know, when it does happen, uh, you want to ensure that the turnaround times are as fast as possible. So the accidents are, are repaired. Uh, when, when you look at the small accidents, uh, you know, those are you know, always going to be covered by, by ZoomCar, actually by our customers. Um, you know, so so th those costs are covered. So, you know, you don't have to worry at all. So if like a small mirror breaks off or you, know, you have some running board dent or something like that, Again, you know, no, no cost for you, obviously, uh, out of pocket. And any of the a more material accident or damage, uh, of, of course, is going to get covered by the insurance company. So the important point to note is that uh, you know, there's no cash going out for you. Uh, there's also you know, no intervention involvement from a, a time perspective, really. So you have that convenience as well as the cost saving. <clears throat> so with that covered, I just wanted to kind of quickly jump back to the, the maintenance piece. Uh, to give you a little bit more understanding on the process. So we talked about the IoT device, uh, the black box that we have in the car, uh, which helps to prevent some of these issues and it helps reduce cost. But uh, from a process standpoint, when, when there is an issue that's reported, let's say the, the brakes are um, you know, a little tight or you know, the brake pads are, are wearing out, uh, which is something that happens over time, uh, you can just quickly you know, go onto the app, uh, submit a maintenance request uh, right there itself. Uh, so again, just you know, a couple taps, you're done in a matter of seconds. Uh, we can you know, either engage an RSA if, if you're out on the road or something, uh, or you know, we can actually uh, go ahead and, and then have the, the guy, you, know, you can have the uh, actual garage uh, pick up the car uh, from your place itself. Uh, so you know, the car is repaired. The important point to note is that the, the basic repair costs, so the, the running costs, uh, are covered by you as a car owner, um, since you are actually, just like with the fuel, uh, since you know, you're the, the primary user of the car, so you know, we, we anticipate most people will end up using the car you know, around 20 days or so out of the month. Uh, you know, if you're using it around 20 days out of the month, it means that the majority of the time uh, you're driving the car and you're using the car. Uh, so the maintenance charges are covered by you uh, since you're also earning uh, from the bookings. Uh, but the important point to note is that uh, what we're doing there is we're actually putting a, a cap. So there's a ceiling on the, the total maintenance charge uh, that you know, will you know, ensure that you don't have to go above. Uh, and then that's kind of calculated on a quarterly basis. So over, over a three month basis, which is more of like a, a period around so which service and maintenance would happen, uh, we're actually giving a cap on that. So there's a ceiling there. So you know you have peace of mind that you know, my, my cost will never go above X uh, for maintenance and, and for servicing related work. And so that's really important, I think, because you know, it, it gives you that, that peace of mind, that comfort, uh, that ease of understanding uh, that you can go about your business and uh, you're not going to have any you know, sort of unexpected surprises. Uh, and, and this is something which the, you know, the precise costs or the, the precise ceiling uh, that we offer, uh, it'll differ a little bit by car, uh, by car type. Uh, so with that, you, know, you can you know, actually go ahead and uh, you know, follow up with one of our uh, sales executives uh, who can give you more color and, and details uh, depending on the car type that you're looking at selecting. <clears throat> So uh, a little bit now uh, to, to touch on the overall life cycle of the car and, and think about what happens really when uh, the car is at the end of its life, uh, the end of the useful life of the car. And we think about this 30-month uh, contract that we'll you know, enter into as, as an associate as, as part of the, the program. Um, so we anticipate that you know, based on the running of the car, uh, you know, again, depending on how often you're listing the car, 
uh, you know, you can certainly see you know, the car run for you know, around 3,000, 3,000, 4,000 kilometers uh, in, in a month is, is certainly possible uh, because, again, we have very high utilization, which means that you're earning good revenue, uh, earning good money. And you know, so if we map that back out, you know, it kind of, you know, when you look at like 30 months, that, that seems like a, you know, it's a, it's a very reasonable period of time where you'd probably want to you know, look at then, um, you know, dropping off this car and picking up another car and, you know, hopefully, of course, putting it on Zap as well uh, to, to ensure the affordability and uh, the convenience. So when we think about that life cycle, uh, when you look out at around 30 months, uh, if your, your car uh, is, is actually, uh, you know, out there uh, going, uh, going ahead, uh, then we will uh, look at you know, covering you on a, on a resale, uh, resale guarantee. So uh, that resale guarantee is, uh, is around 40% uh, of, the, of the time uh, for 40% rather uh, of the extra price for diesel cars uh, and uh, approximately 35% uh, for uh, petrol cars uh, on the extra price. So uh, you know, we have, uh, again, no constraints on whether you want to select a diesel car or select a petrol car. Uh, you know, that uh, residual value uh, guarantee is, is kind of based on uh, your market data that we see. We're actually very confident that you'll achieve higher resale value. Uh, so in fact, all of our historical data you know, does point uh, to you know, having higher value. Uh, but I think you know, we wanted to, again, give that peace of mind knowing that you know, you, we're going to you know, give you a you know, strong assurance that uh, you, you will see something uh, which is going to make economic sense for you uh, at the end of the life, um, you know, irrespective of what happens. So that's a really important point. And, you know, kind of that's looking out you know, at the future and then, you know, kind of pulling it back uh, to uh, where we think about uh, what is happening when uh, your car, let's say, is, is actually out uh, down for an accident or, or maintenance uh, and uh, that process as, as it evolves as, as part of Zap. Uh, what we do there, uh, which we're really excited about, is you know we we understand that you know you you want to to have that ultimate convenience, and if if you don't have it, then you know, that that really is is a bummer, and that's unfortunate. So what we do is we give a uh, replacement car, an equivalent replacement car from our existing fleet, uh, if your car is out in the garage for more than twenty four hours, and so we either do that or we give you a, a downtime guarantee, uh, which is five hundred rupees a day, and and so that is designed. Uh, to give you a nice offsetting mechanism to ensure that uh, you're not going to be you know, out of pocket really uh, so your convenience is there uh, your your financial considerations are, are broadly covered and, and so that you know we think is is, is really powerful and, and very important um, so to, to kind of summarize around zap uh, what we're really all about here is creating this totally smart way of owning a car so whether you, know, you think about from the very beginning you have upfront discounts on purchase so you can have a car that's you know, going to cost you less for the same quality, same value, uh, same product. You, know, you can also then, on an ongoing basis, uh, you can reduce your EMI by 50%, 60%, 70%. Uh, you can have a, you know, a, a cap on your maintenance cost where you, know, you have a, a predictable flow where you know what you're going to see. Uh, you have downtime protection, uh, which ensures that you know, when the, the car, whenever it's out on an accident or maintenance, you can have the car replaced or have, have some money coming in. Uh, you can have intelligent monitoring of the car over the life, so you can save on fuel cost. Uh, you can save additionally on the maintenance cost and understand you know, how you're driving to make you a safer driver, a better driver, avoid accidents, and all of that. Um, so then also having this sort of you know, maintenance and service uh, facilitation, uh, which you can do through the app, uh, which is really, really helpful. Again, saving you time, adding convenience to your life. Thinking about the overall booking flow, the, the way you kind of list your car on Zap, you know, very hassle-free, again, a matter of seconds. Uh, you get real-time notifications, rich PNs, SMSs around um, you know, pickups that are coming for your car. So you can see your earnings in real time. Uh, you can see this performance. Uh, and then finally, having the assurance on the back end with your residual value, uh, the resale values are strong, uh, that you know you're uh, going to have uh, very, very stellar economics. And so right now, in terms of the sort of social proof, if you will, um, you know, we've we've had an enormous response. Uh, you know, I think we were very grateful for the the feedback from you know potential associates and actual associates uh, around Zap, and you know, I think it's been a certainly even though the the program itself is uh, you know is still in its first year, uh, we we've had really a, a huge inflow of of real you know great interest and and people who've actually put cars on the road, and you know, so now you know, we have 
Now, actually, well over 5,000 people have already registered for the, the product, for the service, for this, uh, the, the Zap program. And we've actually put on road now you know, 500 plus uh, Zap cards. And, and so this is something which, uh, again, we're really, really excited about uh, because you know, th this is a, a manifestation of really a, you know, a lot of you know, hard work on our side, but then also a lot of collaboration and you know, a lot of sort of fact finding from you, the user, from you, the potential associate. Uh, and really trying to sculpt something from the bottom up, which is going to you know, make a whole lot of sense uh, for your lifestyle and you know, what your aspirations and, and your dreams are around uh, owning a car and, and making it really work and fit for you. And you know, I, I think we have a product which you know, really does work and, and fit for you, the associate, and also is something which um, really fits in nicely with our broader ecosystem of customers who want to avail self-drive car rentals uh, for you know, their, their personal use, for their business use, whatever it may be. So I think it's really this great match and this great collaboration uh, which is going on. And you know, the broader pitch, of course, is you know, we're, we're doing a great thing, I think, for the environment, for the, the urban ecosystem. I mean, we're reducing cars on the road overall um, you know, by having this shared economy, this fractional sharing, uh, this Airbnb for cars, if you will. Uh, and then also at the same time, we're reducing traffic congestion, we're improving air quality, the overall health and wellness, quality of life. Uh, is getting better fundamentally because of this. And so I think it's about being part of this this journey, being part of this community, and that's what we're building, uh, you know, one associate at a time. And we're really, really excited uh, to have you uh, come on board. And so with that, wanted to thank you for your time and you know, say, you know, zoom on, and uh, we look forward to seeing you uh, hopefully here very soon as a part of Zap, as an associate. Uh, thanks for taking the time.